the fuck out! Feels pretty good. I can keep going. For a lot of people, The Legend of Korra is an extremely anticipated game. The Avatar series has kind of always deserved a really good action game, but does The Legend of Korra developed by Platinum Games deliver on all fronts? Let's take a quick look and review The Legend of Korra from Nickelodeon and Activision. Many of you guys might have caught my previous video where we talked about Legend of Korra, I had some hands-on time with the game, and a couple different segments that the game actually offers. The majority of Legend of Korra, and I'm going to try to keep this review as spoiler-free as possible, but I will talk about game mechanics, is split between a few different sections, and that's these sections where you have this endless runner style where you're on top of Naga, and you actually do combat with a bunch of different enemies. There's also this really, really smart thought-out thing, which is the Pro Bending League, which the game starts off with and doesn't get utilized too much until around the end of the game. But either way, The Legend of Korra and the biggest thing that this game has to its name is that it's made by the combat gods, the guys that are the best at making third-person action games for the last decade, and they're kind of the best at it. And Legend of Korra does a very good job. Once you actually have all the abilities unlocked, you have all your bending at your disposal, comboing, hitting opponents is a lot of fun. The biggest problem is that you don't get a lot of variety to the opponents you fight in this game. Kind of fighting between the same henchmen, the same three dudes that pop up in every other situation, robots, or an occasional spirit. The Legend of Korra is only a $14.99 game, so expect it to be treated kind of like that. But when you actually have access to all this stuff, beating up on opponents is a lot of fun. The other gripe with that is that you don't get access to all of your bending until nearly the end of the game. So swapping out between stances is really, really cool and can actually add for some fantastic combos when you start charging up your attacks. The problem is, is that you only have so much available to you. The second playthrough of Korra would probably be a lot better because you get access to so much more as far as what your character can do. The biggest issue with this is that the game's length does not allow you to kind of get access to all your abilities right off the bat. They spend the majority of the game, which lasts around four hours, getting your bending and until the very end when you fight the final boss. But combat does feel smooth. The biggest thing and one of the most brightest aspects of The Legend of Korra is the animations, the preservation of the martial arts, the animations to the moves, the effects, and overall how it looks. When Korra starts bending and doing stuff and switching between the different styles of, uh, of bending, it's great. It looks freaking fantastic, and it controls really well too. There's some minor nitpicks with some enemies sometimes just not taking damage every once in a while, but that's kind of a little bit of a quirk when enemies get up off the floor. The same cannot be said for the environments in Legend of Korra. A lot of the time when you're running around, it's very big open environments, kind of smashing a pot here, jumping on a ledge there. Nothing that really sparks an amazing amount of curiosity for an average video game player or somebody that's used to running around 3D environments. They kind of do look like they're from a PS2 era where there's a lot of empty space and a lot of running. You will do kind of a lot of running in this game, getting from next sequence to sequence where you have to beat up a bunch of enemies. This isn't specifically a bad thing. We do have to understand that Korra is a budget title, but it does kind of not make a lot of sense when the city that you're running through is kind of unpopulated as you beat up a whole bunch of henchmen and enemies. But when you get to those moments where you have the combat available to you, which is simply just a couple of attacks, a light attack, a heavy attack, a jump attack, as well as switching between your bending and a parry along with a dodge. I do find it kind of funny that you have, in this game, a block button, aka the parry button, as well as a dodge. Um, it does seem like usually in a lot of fighting games you get one or the other, and in this situation, you have a lot to you uh, in order to actually get your character to stay alive, because even on the normal difficulty, you will die a lot in The Legend of Korra, especially if you're not familiar with action games. Even the opening sequence, which has you pro-bending against a couple of other benders as your Korra alone, is fairly challenging. And even for folks that really are just jumping into this game, the normal difficulty might be a little too much. I'd actually recommend casual for anyone that's a super casual action fan. Don't feel bad about it. Normal's already pretty hard. Unlocking the extreme difficulty comes after you actually beat the game, which is kind of disappointing to me. I like having at least something a little hard. But the game did provide some pretty, pretty big challenges as I was going through. A lot of enemies have double life bars, especially bosses, and that stuff can take a long time to take them down. You have to really figure out how you do damage in this game, and once you establish that, you keep going to that route, and it ends up working a lot. But the biggest issue is that it's really hard to figure that out if you don't understand how action games work. There is an element of depth to The Legend of Korra, which I do admire. The problem is that applying this depth and actually using it smartly and 
Finding some enemies that might be weak against certain bending doesn't seem to be especially applicable a lot of the time. There is some guys where you run into these three different henchmen that have three different bending abilities, but actually using your combat in different ways and exploiting like this way that the dodge works really well or you get a new ability isn't really established because, as we said, it's a $15 game. But for what it is, you jump in, you beat up guys, you're able to do bending, it looks cool, it's a lot of fun. Minor gripes aside, with things along the level design and occasional kind of really quirky camera issues, there's some big problems near the end game where enemies get kind of large, and you really don't know what the hell is going on, and it can be slightly frustrating. What? I can't even see my character! Okay, let's, let's just back it up. And we're dead. Alright. Doesn't camera seems like it's kind of a problem. These dudes are just too big. The Naga moments I do like sometimes, but sometimes they just drag on for way too long. And I feel that that's one of the biggest issues with The Legend of Korra is that there was not a big budget for this game. There was not supposed to be a lot of game to it, but they kind of made Platinum expand the game to a certain degree to make it at least so long, at least a four hour experience for your $15. And through that time, you'll spend a lot of time running, a lot of time fighting the exact same enemies, and a lot of time even revisiting certain points from previous in the game, so there is even a little bit of backtracking. Um, it's not specifically a terrible thing because you look forward to the combat, you look forward to the action, but there are some moments where there's some really frustrating things during that action and you just want it to go away. What the? Oh, this is just not well done. <laughs> this is just not well done. <laughs> And by the end of the game, some of that stuff was frustrating me a little bit, to the point of which I just wanted to get to something different. And the final boss is an absolute breath of fresh air. He's really cool, he does a lot of cool stuff, and the overall, like, climactic ending to the game is satisfying and it works well. What isn't very satisfying is that the story is completely throwaway. I don't feel like the story matters at all for the characters. I'm not completely caught up with the Korra series, but I at least can understand kind of what's going on, but in this game, even with the story standalone, I don't even think you would really need to be caught up with what happened before in the show, even though the environments are kind of affected by what happened in the show, you'll be fine. If you just want to play a Legend of Korra game, enjoy it for what it's worth for the 15 bucks, play through it again when you're done beating it, having all the bending, beating up guys, that's going to be a lot of fun. But if you're looking for a thorough, deep Avatar experience where everything is nitpicked and polished to no end, the Legend of Korra absolutely is not that, but it does remain good for what it was going out to do, which is a decent combat game. I personally give The Legend of Korra around a 6 to 6.5 out of 10. It's not bad by any means, but it lacks polish and areas to make it extremely good. Let me know what you guys think about The Legend of Korra in the comments below if you already played the game. I've been looking forward to something like this for a long time, especially from Platinum, so I'm a big fan of these guys, and I kind of like playing everything they do. But I don't think everything they craft is absolute gold. I had some issues with Anarchy Reigns, but there's another game coming out that's going to be absolutely amazing this week, which is Bayonetta 2, so stay tuned for that, guys. As always, I appreciate you watching. My name is Maximilian, and I'll see you next time. Oh my god, and you are effing dead. Effing dead. I can't get